Guys, I promised to do a video on Izu Ugonu versus Gregory Tony, and here it is. Um, for those of you who don't know, Izu Ugonu, 17 0 heavyweight prospect uh, from the same stable as Joseph Parker in New Zealand. Um, he often fights on Joseph Parker's undercard, and he actually had a step up fight this weekend against Gregory Tony. Uh, I know a few of you guys um, haven't actually heard of Gregory Tony. He's been someone I've been on and off aware of for five or six years. Um, formerly, he was actually a fairly um, decent heavyweight, you know, maybe someone you'd consider in the top 50. He actually has a UD win over Carlos Takam at the early stage of his career, which you know, shows that there's some pedigree there. Obviously, Carlos Takam is a guy who most would consider a, a top 20 heavyweight these days. Um, he also fought in the prize fighter tournament in the UK. Um, he also arguably gave Richard Towers his toughest night before Richard Towers went on to lose to... Uh, uh, Lucas Brown, Gregory Tony was involved in a very controversial fight with Richard Towers where a lot of people thought Gregory Tony was, was robbed due to uh, questionable uh, decisions by the officials that night. Uh, so I, I'm aware of Gregory Tony, he's a French heavyweight, he's a massive guy, he must be 6'7", six, 6'8", six, uh, real, real big lump. Um, but it's fair to say that despite looking semi-impressive on box rack, at this stage, he seems to be very much in the opponent stage of his career. Um, and against Gregory Tony, he, sorry, against Izu Ugonu, he looked to be at that opponent stage of his career. There didn't seem to be too much desire there. And fundamentally, Ugonu was able to hurt him, drop him, and stop him uh, inside two rounds. Now, Ugonu looked very good in this fight. Um, he was a smaller man in there by some way, but he looked so athletic so snappy with his work that he was kind of able to stay out of the pocket, um, dance around on the outside, um, put shot and land. Um, his punches seemed to be hard, his punches seemed to be accurate, he seemed to be uh, effective both to the head and to the body. You always like to see body punching in a heavyweight. And Gregory Tony, who seemed to be honest to be turning up for the paycheck, uh, was out of there straight away. Now, it's a bit frustrating for fans of New Zealand heavyweight boxing how the Parker and Agoni fights went because in both of these fights the opponents were so woeful in terms of their seeming lack of desire and their lack of will to win that it's kind of hard to know how impressed you can be uh, from the performances of the two fighters, Parker and Izu Agoni. You kind of have to question how meaningful these wins are because it really did appear that the opponents were just turning up for the paycheck rather than turning up with a genuine desire to upset the apple cart. And I think where we're at with Izu Gono is that he's now 17-0. He's looking fairly good. Uh, and it perhaps it's time to start slowly raising the levels here. I think Ugonu's 29, so he's not old for a heavyweight by any stretch of the imagination. But he's also not a baby. Um, and it's time to start giving him fights that will teach him a few lessons. It's time to start giving him fights where he can work on things, where he can have his weaknesses highlighted, where he can maybe start to um, have questions asked of him, where he's going to have to adapt and evolve in the ring and come up with new responses to uh, you know, the, the, the test put in front of him. And I don't think at this stage bringing in short notice opponents or bringing in opponents who have lost several of their last few fights are necessarily uh, going to be right for him. Um, I'm not saying throw him to the wolves. I'm not saying put him straight in with an undefeated top 20 fighter. But I'd like to see a gradual step up here. Because, to be honest, Agonu's career so far has failed to catch my interest to the same extent of Parker's because the opponents have just been of a slightly lower quality. And sometimes I wonder when the opponents are you know, the last fight he was in, Ramirez, is one of the worst bits of matchmaking I've ever seen. Ramirez is a guy who'd been beaten up by a welterweight, lost a fight to a welterweight, you know, um, and he was now fighting at heavyweight. It was so bizarre. But when you see matchmaking like that, it sometimes makes you wonder if the team behind the fighter um, don't actually have much faith in them, and if they're not risking them because they're concerned that any risk would lead to a defeat. Now, I'm sure that's not the case with Agonu, because he, like he looks like a decent fighter. He looks like a fighter with some... Uh, potential. Um, so maybe, I mean, in terms of the type of fighters I'm thinking of here, in terms of the, the guys I'd be looking at, um, 
I'm thinking your established gatekeeper types. Brian Minto. Um, Kevin Johnson. Uh, Sermon Williams. That sort of level of opponent. The kind of guy who's going to give him rounds. The kind of guy who's going to be slightly awkward, slightly slippery. Who's going to pose some sort of questions. Without necessarily having the offence. Having the potential to get a guy like a Gonu beat. You know, when I've watched Agono in the past, I've always thought he was smart. I've always thought he did things well. You know, he's got his basics down. He's obviously athletic. He obviously carries a little bit of power, at least at this level. Uh, but I haven't ever come away from an Agono fight thinking, wow, this guy's going to be a world champion. You know, if you look at Joseph Parker, you see elite level hand speed, elite level punch variety, elite level athleticism. If you look at Tyson Fury, you look at elite level awkwardness, elite level size, the fact he can go uh, southpaw or orthodox, the fact that he can fight on the inside for such a big man. You look at all of those things and you look at Deontay Wilder, you say he's got an elite level uh, right hand, elite level power, he's got a good jab. Uh, I'm looking at Ogonu and world class attributes are not yet jumping out at me. Clearly he's a very good heavyweight. Clearly, he's a guy who could enter the top 30 in the world. Is he a guy who could enter the top 10 in the world? Um, I don't know, is the answer. And I don't think we are going to know until he starts to raise the level of opposition. If he looks as good as he looked against Gregory Tony, um, against the guys that are rung up, then it's time to start getting excited. But right here and now, uh, he's been... A little bit lightly tested for me, for someone in his 17th, who's had 17 professional fights. Gregory Tony was a move in the right direction, but fundamentally came with very little to offer. Uh, you know, and if you look at some of Agonu's fights historically, I know he's fought Julius Long, he fought this guy Ramirez. Uh, looking at those fights, Agonu, he clearly carries power. I certainly don't believe he's a Deontay Wilder puncher, or a, you know, a, 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 even a Joseph Parker puncher, if you like. I don't think he's got that... Uh, tremendous one punch knockout power. So the fact that Gregory Tony was out of there so quickly, uh, for me, you know, let's not get carried away with thinking this guy is the second coming of George Foreman in terms of the power stakes, let's put it that way. Um, he, he does look to me to be a slightly smaller heavyweight. I know he used to fight a cruiserweight, which would obviously tie in, but we'll, we'll see. I'm excited about Agonu, uh, but I'm less excited than. You know, if you look at the A level prospects in world boxing, you say. Um, you got your, your Anthony Joshua, your Huey Furies, your Joseph Parkers. Uh, for me, those are like the sort of top, top, top draw prospects out there. And Agonu for me is just south of that conversation. You know, he's he's in the conversation with the uh, the Andy Ruizes, the Azuru Um I'm trying to think of some more examples. Maybe the Dillian Whites. You know, he's a he's a level below at present. I'm just not seeing anything from him in terms of opposition and attributes that make me think he's necessarily of the same level as the top, top guys in terms of his upside. But it is early on in his career. You can only beat what's put in front of you. And Gregory Tony was probably the biggest test of his career to date. And he handled him very, very nicely. So uh, credit to him for that. It'd be very interesting to see where they take him from here. Uh, I have seen some rumours that potentially he will be moved to a big fight. And I don't like the idea of that. I think with heavyweights, it's all about gradual adjustments. And I don't think you can go straight from fighting Gregory Tony to fighting someone like a Huey Fury, for example. Uh, if Joshua fights Parker in November or in January, February, who, who knows what will happen. But if, if he were to fight him, it's likely that Izuru Gonu could potentially go on the undercard against a UK-based heavyweight. And I wouldn't want to see him thrown straight into a 50-50 fight uh, with a, a Dillian White or a David Price or someone like that. You know, I'm not saying he couldn't beat those guys, but what I am saying is I think it would be poor management to stick him in a fight of that size and magnitude without really building him. And to chuck him straight into that level from a, a Gregory Tony and a Ramirez wouldn't be the right way of handling his career, at least as far as I'm concerned. So I'd like to see him stepped up gradually. I've given some names of people I'd like to see him in with. Let me know your thoughts, people. Where do you think he's at? How highly do you rate him? Do you think he's in that elite top-tier prospect band or are you with me that he's, he's one level below and he maybe can get there, but he just needs to show a bit more in terms of attributes and opponents and uh, we'll go from there, I guess. 
Um, leave your comments in the section below. If you've enjoyed the video, please hit the thumbs up button. Uh, if you're new to the channel or you haven't subscribed before, please take the time to hit the subscribe button so you can check out my other stuff. Uh, many thanks indeed for watching. Really appreciate it.